So what I do at the company that I work for is work as chief application architect. And that means that I go and talk to customers, people who might be using our product, to help them solve problems, but also to listen to them so that I can bring ideas back for how we might solve problems in the future. That's uh, an exciting thing to be able to see new trends in computation and how we can lead to solutions for that. But I also do a lot of work with open source software. So I'm the VP of Incubator at Apache Software, for instance, which means that I help new projects come to Apache to learn how Apache does intellectual property governance and things like that, and how to build community. That's the thing that Apache does best, is build community. And people think that software comes from Apache, but in fact it comes to Apache. And that's the goal of the incubator, is to make that sort of thing happen. Well, uh, the, my first involvement in Apache Flink was coming to Berlin for a different conference, for Berlin Buzzwords, which is held every summer. And I love coming to that, partly because I love seeing Berlin, seeing how Berlin changes every year. No other city I know changes with such a short time constant. And through Buzzwords, through Isabel, Drost, and, and others, I met uh, students, postdocs at TUB, Technische Universität here in Berlin, and they were, were working on a system called Stratosphere. Ultimately, it became clear that Stratosphere would become more than just an academic project, and so they asked me to help them act as a mentor at Apache to bring Flink into Apache. This was before my job as VP of Incubator, but just as a member of Apache. So I helped them do that. I helped other projects as well. In fact, packages perhaps competitive with Flink, Storm and Apex and so on. And that was my first full-blown introduction to Flink itself, when Flink first got named Flink. So the Flink project right now is undergoing a big transition from an early project to a project which is what you might call enterprise scale, enterprise reliability. There are many features being added which allow Flink to serve in non-traditional ways, in ways that are different than a normal streaming computation layer and impressively more on a much wider remit within an enterprise. Uh, there's things like save points, uh, these are exportable checkpoints, things like probing directly to the Flink instances to do queries. These are new capabilities for streaming programs and very exciting potential. Well, in some ways, the most exciting things happening with Flink are the most boring things. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of an of a oxymoron, but a project to grow up, like a person, must eventually take responsibility to do some of the boring parts of a job. Not just the fun, not just getting a, a suite from an uncle or something like that, but actually do, buckling down and doing day-to-day -day business. And more and more we're seeing the features being included in Flink that allow it to do those things. Now, that's, that sounds terrible, but it means that the system, the, the project is maturing quite an extraordinary amount for that to become possible. It's hard to say whether companies or just ordinary research groups or somebody like that are the best people for adopting Flink right now. Probably companies in many ways are the most important because they will pay people to think about Flink. And that means that somebody will come back with new ideas, new implementations and things like that. But in general, growing this community, providing a base, providing secondary levels, having researchers work on Flink, having real business users work on Flink, having people who don't even really like thinking about computers work with Flink, are the really, really important things that need to happen in the Flink community to build that community out. It's very important to always have fun with these systems, and so you should start by playing. You should start by trying an example, try to build something yourself, try to do a problem that you failed to do previously or was very complicated before, and try to talk to the community about what you're trying to do. That will have two effects. One, educate yourself, but more importantly, even when you make mistakes in public, 
This will be educational for other people who are hiding on the mailing list, who are too shy to say anything. And if you come up and you make a stupid mistake, it's one of the best things you can do for Flink. Because other people will go, well, if he or she says that in public, I could say something. And so that builds community. It builds a sense of we're all in this together. And so trying something, coming to the mailing list and asking about it is really an amazingly important contribution. Almost as important as writing code because it brings more people in. You come, five more come with you, even though you don't know it.